I've heard a lot of so-called trainers diss bodybuilding for athletes. At the same time, I've seen plenty of hockey players who think following bodybuilding workouts will elevate their gain. So today I wanted to shed some light on this admittedly confusing topic. Over the next few minutes, we'll talk about the pros and cons of bodybuilding for hockey athletes. What aspects, if any, should you include in your gym sessions? And what are you better off leaving out? Let's start with the good stuff. For packing on muscle, bodybuilding flat out works. If you get stronger in a hypertrophy rep range, you will get bigger. By the way, the effective range for muscle growth is far wider than the conventional hypertrophy range of 8 to 12 reps per set. Just had to throw that in there. For a lot of athletes, lack of muscle mass is holding you back big time. For an undersized player who isn't as skilled as Patrick Kane or Johnny Goudreau, the way to raise your game off the ice is to beef yourself up. So you actually have something to work with in a board battle or in a scrum in front of the net. You don't want to be the small, weak guy who gets thrown around by bigger players. To overcome that, you got to spend some time in the gym. Get bigger. And for that, you cannot beat bodybuilding. Bigger back, bigger glutes, bigger quads. Heck, if you want bigger arms, bodybuilding will deliver. Another pro is exercise variety. Out of all strength sports, bodybuilding is the one with the lowest injury rate. This has been documented in several studies. A big reason for that is exercise variety. If you think about it, powerlifting centers around the three competition lifts, squat, bench press, deadlift. Olympic lifting is all about cleans, jerks, snatches, and tons of squats. When you repeat a certain exercise over and over with heavy loads, you're more likely to develop overuse injuries. Any man who trains hard and is reasonably strong knows what I'm talking about. We have all experienced if your shoulders and knee or back that hurts, a painful rest, you really don't feel like holding a heavy barbell in your hands or on your back in that situation. Contrast that with bodybuilding where there are no mandatory exercises. If your knee is giving you trouble today, you don't have to put a barbell on your back and squat up and down. Unlike a powerlifter or Olympic lifter would, a bodybuilder could opt for some lunges, leg presses, leg extensions, hack squats, or any other movement that hits the quads without aggravating the knee. So from an injury avoidance perspective, bodybuilding, thanks to its large exercise toolbox, is a great way to train. Having said that, let's talk about the disadvantages of lifting like a bodybuilder. Going back to what I just said about exercise variety, for a bodybuilder who wants bigger quads, leg presses, leg extensions, and similar exercises are fine, but they won't help you sprint faster or jump higher. Think of exercises on a spectrum. On one end, we have movements that don't really transfer to sports. We can call these non-functional movements for athletes. On the other end of the spectrum, we have barbell squats, rear foot elevated split squats, and so on that produce not only strength and muscle growth, but will help your performance on the field. We can call these functional exercises for sports. You might be wondering what makes, say, a back squat more functional than a leg press. That would require a separate discussion to do this topic justice, but to give you the quick rundown. Sports is played standing up. A leg press is never going to have much carryover to running faster because you're doing it seated. In addition, a leg press doesn't challenge your stability anywhere near as much as a free weight squat. When you have three, four plates on the bar, your entire body, including your abdominals, lower back, hips, legs, must stay drum tight to make the lift. Otherwise, you'll buckle under the load. Whereas in a leg press, the resistance moves over a predetermined path. So there's less demand for your body to stabilize itself. A machine handles most of the stabilization for you. And finally, the neural demands are much higher in a free weight squat. A top squat workout can take a day or two for the nervous system to balance back from. A hard leg press workout can also cause lots of local fatigue and soreness in the quads for the next 24 to 72 hours but the effect on your nervous system is limited. All of these factors explain why certain lifts transfer to athletic activities, whereas others, despite producing strength and muscle gains, don't make you a faster, more explosive athlete. Which brings us right to another huge downside of bodybuilding workouts, the lack of acceleration. If you look at great bodybuilders, they lift with excellent control. 
both on the way down and up. So a repetition could take three, four seconds. They do this to maximize tension on the muscle in order to force more growth, which is great for their goals. But for an athlete, you don't want slow, smooth contractions, especially concentric contractions, which is the lifting part of a repetition. We want the muscle to produce tons of force fast. Sports is all about power and speed. You want to be explosive. That doesn't mean you should rush through lifts. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the concentric part should be done fast. You want to accelerate the bar on the way up to maximize bar speed and power output. With very heavy weights, the bar won't move fast, but the intent should be to move it with speed. This difference in your intent behind lifting a resistance explains why 99% of bodybuilders, despite having lots of muscle mass and strength, are slow. They can't jump high and they're not able to sprint fast. They don't train in a way that improves their ability to produce lots of force quickly. So even though they have physiques that look athletic, they suck at any athletic activity that requires short bursts of speed and high amounts of power or agility. As the saying goes, looks like Tarzan plays like Jane. A hockey player can't have none of that. You got to be able to not only look the part, but also perform the part. Another drawback of bodybuilding is the excessive amount of lifting volume their routines include. It's way too much work for an athlete who on top of gym workouts also trains his sport five, six, seven times a week. When do you have the time to recover from all that physical stress? You don't. That means you cannot kill yourself in the gym with high volume. You gotta cap it. You gotta keep it reasonable. Otherwise, you'll train yourself into the ground, and when it comes time to perform on the ice, you've got nothing in the tank. You can do lots of volume, to some extent, when lifting weights is your sport. But if you're lifting to improve sports performance outside of the weight room, you gotta be smarter than that. Another part of bodybuilding that hockey players should not mimic is the reliance on isolation exercises. An athlete never plays in isolation. When you perform a sharp cut, check a guy into the boards or fire off a wrister in the slot, you're using more than one body part. You're using your entire body. Your body works as a unit on the field and on the ice. So does it make sense to fill your workouts with a bunch of triceps kickbacks, calf raises, lateral raises, bicep curls, or other isolation movements? No. Most of your training time, 80, 90% should be devoted to multi-joint exercises that you can really overload. Squats, weighted chin-ups and dips, cleans, deadlifts, presses, things like that. If you want to do extra work for the pipes or shoulders to make them grow so you look pretty in a tank top, that's fine. But there's no reason to make lateral raises or rope pushdowns a priority. Now you know what aspects hockey athletes should borrow from bodybuilding and what to skip to achieve top performance. On that note, watch this video that reveals the pros and cons of powerlifting training for hockey. And this clip here where I take you through a full NHL upper body workout so you can get bigger and stronger like a professional athlete. Thank you for watching. For more great training and nutrition tips, you know what to do. Beat that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.